Cool. Thank you all for coming. Yay. This is the second um, night of this Contour Lines <coughs> mini tour project I played last night in New York City. Tonight we're here with Ben Taylor, and tomorrow we're going to be in Baltimore. And part of this project was we got a grant um, from New Music USA, previously Meet the Composer, um, which is a MetLife Creative Connections, and basically that funds Ben to be here and talk to you before concerts. We're putting composers in front of audiences, which is really cool. I know today we have a lot of people who are like academically trained in music. We have NAC students, we have some faculty members, but we also have other people. I know Casey played music back in high school as well. Um, so um, I think maybe what we'll first talk about is just Ben's piece and sort of what, what it was about. And then um, maybe he'll talk about how he wrote it, answer any questions, and we'll do a little bit of hands-on stuff. And then we'll kick off music. Cool. Okay, so I wrote Ship Breaking based on uh, this real life in Chittagong, Bangladesh. If you go on Google Maps and look at the beaches, you'll see that they're <coughs> strewn with these old holes of ships. And so that's like where ships go to die when they get too expensive to insure. Everything from uh, cruise liners to oil barges. And, and Anyway, so they run them up on the bank and then guys with blow torches just start cutting them apart into smaller pieces. And then you, uh, you, you can watch videos online of these uh, workers that heft these huge pieces of steel onto their shoulders with like 20 guys around one huge piece of steel. And then they bring them to waiting trucks and then all the steel is recycled and they make money that way. Um, and anyway, I was fascinated. I saw a photography exhibit detailing this process of ship breaking, and I couldn't believe that people are out there taking apart these huge ships, and all they're using is blowtorches to do this work. Blowtorches in their bare, bare hands. They're not wearing work gloves, no helmets, and of course there's political controversy there of exploiting, perhaps, um, the lower classes. But I thought it was a great testament of what we as humans can do when we put our mind to a job. So, you know, applying this more generally, whenever I have a task that seems insurmountable or formidable, um, we can do it just one little piece at a time, just like those guys that take apart those huge ships. So, in writing this piece for Zach, he, he asked, you know, he wanted something with electronics. And so as soon as I saw this, these photographs, I thought, Cool, I'll incorporate a lot of metallic sounds and the sounds of blow torches cutting into part of these ships. So I went to the metal lab at IU and I said, hey, can I record some blow torches? And of course the guy was like, what? He had never you know, had anyone ask to hold a microphone next to his blow torch. Uh, but, but that worked out really well. And so all, this, all the electronic sounds that you'll hear are either manipulated saxophone, because I had Zach do like a recording session where I asked him, to play multiphonics and slap tongue and stuff, and the manipulated iron sounds from the ships, of the, the breaking ships, uh, the blow torches and me banging on clank, pr uh, planks of metal and sheets of metal, and uh, just having a grand old time in the IU metal shop. <laughs> and I put all that together in a program called Max MSP, which is a, uh, a programming language that basically lets me use his live sound and distort it and, and manipulate it in all kinds of crazy ways. If you want to think of it like a, a glorified guitar pedal box, like you would see an electric guitarist playing and he steps on a pedal and it suddenly changes his sound, well that's kind of what Zach's doing with, with this computer program. Did I explain maybe a little bit about the piece? <laughs> so I'm a real live living composer. And I know several of you guys are too, so it's not a big surprise. <laughs> but, uh, all of you composers? Yeah, raise your hand if you write some music. Any, any just any idea. Idea. Connor, okay, you didn't yeah. write her piece. You raise your hand and I'm playing your piece today. <laughs> well, very good, very good. It's cool. good to see that art is thriving here in, at NEC. Um, earlier today I interviewed Ben. It was sort of part of like the ongoing project I had to interview composers I worked with. And I was sort of asking him how he goes about writing pieces. And you talked about like starting with this kernel idea. Um, 
So for shipbreaking, it was these photos by Perchin Perchinsky. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you could talk about some of your other pieces. Um, or there's a leap, right? Uh-huh. Sure. Um, but just, just what, what they were inspired by. Okay. Uh, so it's a chamber orchestra piece, nothing with electronics. And it was inspired by a photograph of a guy, um, and he's dressed up in a tuxedo, and he's suspended in midair like this over a hay bale. He's not touching it. it so it's like he's either caught in midair jumping over it, or somehow he's been dropped and he's like about to do the splits on it. Or, <laughs> anyway, it's a really quirky photo, and uh, so I used that as the inspiration for this really quirky chamber piece uh, that has now been uh, performed several times in the U.S. So, yeah, I enjoy photographs and quirky things like that. Visual yeah. arts, yeah. Sorry, I'll come back over here. Um, <laughs> and Ben also has a background as a trumpet player and somewhat as a, a pianist? Or is yeah. that just, yeah? Well, lessons Not as, as, as a kid, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was asking him if he sort of like thinks about trumpet playing when he writes, or how like what type of tools he uses to start writing. Maybe maybe you could talk about what it's like for you to go from scratch to having a general piece. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'll sit down at the piano sometimes and improvise, or a lot of times I'll actually uh, record my voice singing little things. And not like operatic singing, but uh, more like, well, like the beginning of your piece in a lot of ways was... You just improvised or something. Yeah, so, I, you know, I was just like... And then... Which is really easy for me to play. Thanks <laughs> <laughs> for just singing anything. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, then, and then I'll kind of like transcribe stuff that I liked from some of those sessions, you might want to call it, of me just sitting there and having fun with music. And then some of that ends up in the piece, and I, you know, use that material then in different ways to, to hopefully make a convincing structure, a mm -hmm. shape for the piece. You sort of talked about coming to, like, sell chunks, like you tend to like evolve like pieces of material, mm -hmm. and then are, are you reordering that, or do you sort of have a pre-planned path for the music? Oh, I'll once I've developed different, or, or once I've generated different little cells. Uh, of material, I was telling Zach, so I had like 50 little sheets of paper, like index cards, with different musical materials on them, and I laid them all out on the floor, and I just kept rearranging until I felt like, okay, this is going to work really well with this, and this works really well following that, oh, and this is going to be a good ending, oh, and this is going to be a good beginning, and, and then I taped it. <laughs> I used scotch tape, and I just taped it all to a huge sheet of paper, and that was my like sketch for for shipbreaking, was these uh, musical ideas that I just brought together, and and some of them were the electroacoustic components too, um, but then from there I had a fixed, at least a plan, mm -hmm. for for how this piece was going to progress. So yeah, I do I like to mix and match mm -hmm. if I'm writing. Yeah. And then as far as working on electronics, you, you asked me to record things for you to sort of practice with. You would pick processes in Max and sort of feed that in as a way to hear what it would sound like live. Right, right. Which, maybe, could we now demo yeah. a couple things? Who, who's never heard of Max MSP? Let's get somebody that's never heard of it. I know some people in here have never heard of it. <laughs> Don't be shy. Wow, everybody else has though? That's great. Cool. Um, so who who then? <laughs> you two. I think I think the two smiling <laughs> back there. <laughs> um would one of you come up and you can poke buttons? <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Everybody, this is Jen. Hey Jen! <laughs> so Jen is awesome because she's not are you, did you ever study music? No. No. Oh, wonderful. And she's here tonight. That's yeah. so cool, right? Hey, I'm yeah. you. <laughs> um, so, what I've got going on is a computer that's running processing things. And that's connected to this box, which serves to get sound in and out. And so my microphone comes here and goes in, and that's where the computer gets sound from me. And then it generally outputs from that to speakers.
And I have two pedals I'm using for different pieces, but for Ben's piece, I just have to use this one. Um, on the patch, why don't you just turn down all the pre recorded stuff and let her talk into the mic a little bit? <laughs> uh, let's see if she can make some. Let's check. <laughs> So this is, um, at the beginning of the setup, there's just a general reverberiness to it. Mm -hmm. And when I'm playing, I can see this window for the piece. Um, it's plugged in, and I'll try and show you guys. So Ben is pretty awesome at making a nice looking patch. It has a timer for me and faders for me to adjust. And then it gives me numbers 1 through 20 something. And as I'm going through the piece, I press a switch, which makes the numbers cycle. Um, so you press it once, it'll go to one, and if you starts, press it again, it goes to two. Um, we'll make sure that's not going to be crazy loud. <laughs> but why don't you try it? So this button here is making everything go, and you can tap it with your foot. Are you sure? Yep. You can do it. Oh, no. I uh, turned it off. <laughs> this is the, the great excitement of working with electronics. Uh, I had turned down pre-recorded sounds that we didn't accidentally blast it. Cool. So that's section one. And if you press it again, it'll do something else. <laughs> She's like, ooh. So you're gonna start doing this all day at home. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as it's going, as it's going, it um, you don't see much from my angle, but. The, all these settings in the system are changing. So what, what the microphone does might change in section three versus section five. And it pulls up sound keys that Ben's recorded from the metal shop and all these other things like that. Yeah. Is there anything you wanted to add? Uh, no. Um, it's, the live effects are actually really simple for you composers that are wondering. I, I just used some reverb and delay and a spectral delay made by John Gibson. If you haven't seen that Max Batch, you should totally check it out really great. So, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, we could do one more thing. The, the piece with the, the other pedal. We can um, demo <laughs> that out real quick. Jen's excited. I'm pumped. Jen's going to do it for me when I perform. I'm going to go on tour. Reverse saxophone. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I think it'll probably work. Yeah. Turn it up a little bit. Um, it? It's just the first two, up like 50%. Yeah. So this, and this is actually the first piece, Laredo <laughs> by Fabian Levy, and basically um, in his piece there's a thing that just plays a file, and then as I'm performing I'm supposed to change the amount of rever reverberation on my sound. So as you're playing through the microphone it's always just a little bit of reverb, and if you push this pedal up, you see this, this little bar here changing. And that, that's giving me these different integrations of reverb. So why don't you try saying something and then push the pedal down and say something else and you'll hear the change. What do you want me to say? Say, Zach's music is great. <laughs> do it. Do it! <laughs> Stop <again. laughs> Zach's music is great. Oh no. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Zach's music is great. Yay. <laughs> Let's give Jim a hand. Yeah. Um, cool. So I let's hear you play. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll just get rolling.